to Cupcake Addiction's Zebra Cake Pop tutorial where I'll be showing you how to make this very cool and a little bit stylized Zebra Cake Pop. If you've seen our Giraffe Cake Pop tutorial, he is the perfect accompaniment for your next safari or jungle themed occasion. Tools and equipment that we will be using today, I've got here just a little, it's a container lid or a small container and I've got just a couple of drops of, I'm using vodka but you can also use rose spirit, so Cake Decorator's rose spirit and I'm going to team that up with some black food colour paste for our black detailing today but you can also use black candy melts. I've got some scissors, a paintbrush, two lollipop sticks, two toothpicks, I've got my pre-rolled cake pop ball. Now if you don't have a great recipe for getting your cake pop balls to this consistency, I will leave a link in the description box below to our recipe and that will help you get them here and ready to decorate. I've got some melted white chocolate, as I mentioned my Wilton black colour paste. I've got a metre of licorice, so just a metre of licorice and a licorice strap. I've got some little pink baking marshmallows. First thing what we're going to do is we're going to prepare our zebra ears so that they've got some time to dry. So we want to take one of those little pink marshmallows and our scissors and I'm just going to cut it across on a diagonal. So what you'll end up with, and we did this for our giraffe as well, is two sort of little triangles. They'll have a flat bottom and a pointed top. So holding them by the flat bottom, you want to dip them in that melted white chocolate and we're just going to dip them and turn them so that the melted white chocolate is coating everything except for the pink inner ear. Give it a little shake off to make sure you've gotten rid of any excess and you should have something that looks like this. So you can pop that down on your workspace to dry or you can pop it in the fridge depending on how much time you've got. We'll just repeat that with the other ear. Alright, now that our ears are sitting there and drying, ready to go, we'll take our cake pop stick and we're going to, firstly we'll roll our ball. So we've got our circular ball. I've pre-rolled and pre-refrigerated our zebra's head. So to do that, you've got your ball and you just want to rock it. See my hands are sort of in a V there. So I'm rocking it down to a bit of a cone shape. Now, the zebra's head is actually quite pointy, so you want it to be sort of long and pointed and you don't want it to have, our giraffe had a really big fat nose, but our zebra's going to have a nice sort of a, a long pointed head, so sort of like an elongated strawberry. Pop that one into the refrigerator for about 15 minutes until it is really hard. So when I push that one, it comes out of shape. When I push this one, it does not. You want it to be really firm. So grab your lollipop stick, dip it into your melted white chocolate, turn your zebra's head upside down, and you want to put the lollipop stick in about here, so about a quarter of the way in at the back, the fatter part of his head, because that's where we want his neck to be coming out, and we're going to let that seal set. Now while that seal is setting, and you can pop that in the fridge if you like, but I know my cake pop ball is really cold, we're going to take our licorice strap, and I'm just going to cut off a section. So I've pre-cut some of these so that you guys don't have to watch me cut them, but this is basically going to be our main. If you don't like licorice, you can just use some black candy melts or something like that to scribble on a mane. Or you can use something dark brown, maybe a Tootsie Roll, but licorice is probably one of the few alternative, the few things that are black that's going to give you this effect. So we're just slicing nice thin little pieces there. You can see those coming off. So what I've done is I've torn it off, I've cut it in half so that I've got the length that I want, and we're just chopping off thin little slices that look like this. Pop those off to the side. And while we're still waiting for that one to dry, I'm going to show you how to mix the black food colour with the alcohol. So what you want to do is just take, like I said, it's just a tiny bit of the alcohol. And the reason that we do this, I'm going to go one, two drops of alcohol. The reason that we do this is because black food colouring or any food colouring by itself will take a long time to set, especially on chocolate. But if you mix it with some alcohol, the alcohol will evaporate and it will actually cause it to set a lot faster. So if you just use black food colouring, you're looking at about a 48 hour setting time. But if you use it with alcohol, it should be set and dry in about an hour. So just pick up little, sort of little blobs of your food colour paste. You can see that I'm just mixing it in so that there's no little chunks or anything. Now I want a little bit more than that so I'm going to use another two drops of alcohol. And look there's no real exact measurement, it's a bit trial and error here so 
another little chunk of that food colour paste. I just know that I'm going to need more than that for our nose and stripe detail and I'm just going to stir that through. Make sure that you wipe your paintbrush off so that you've got no chunks or anything stuck in your little bristles there. And we can pop that off to the side. Alright, now my seal is all nice and set. Now from here you're going to need to work quite quickly because while this is wet we need to add the ears and we also need to add as much of the mane as we can. So taking your white chocolate and I'm just going to give that a quick stir so that it's as fluid as it can be. We're going to take the cake pop, dip it in, give it a little turn and pull him out. Just tapping off any excess. Alright, so I'm happy that I've got most of that excess off. I'm just going to take my finger and just wipe it around the neck because I've got a little bit of a little bit of a saggy chin happening there. And as I said, working quite quickly here. You want to take your two ears, so your ears have all set and they look gorgeous, and pop them on either side. One ear and two ears. Get your ears in first because they're the most important part. You really want them to be quite seamless. If it does set on you, you can just put a little blob of melted white chocolate down and attach the ears using that, but it is a little bit easier if you get them in while it's still wet. Alright, now it's time to add our mane. What you want to do with your mane, and I'll see how mine's going, because my cake pop ball was quite cold. Started in the centre. My chocolate's already started setting, so I wasn't quick enough with my tapping. So just take that toothpick, and we're just going to, one section at a time, pop a little bit of a, a blob there. This will be his fringe, and you're just going to stand up your mane pieces. I think I did about three across and I didn't do them too evenly or too close together so I sort of did three and then I did two in the middle and then I did four and make it a little bit haphazard so he's nice and stylized. Just keep going with that until you've got your mane done. want to come all the way around underneath the bottom. You can see there my little mohawk is going really well on my little mane. I think it looks like a mohawk. So I'm just going to continue placing these last few and I want them to go right down to the stick. And then we're just going to have a little look at him and see if he needs any more around the sides. So I've sort of done roughly three across, three or four across in most places. And I've spaced them reasonably evenly but it's a mane. It's supposed to look a bit shaggy and a bit messy. If you love this tutorial, make sure that you head on over to our channel, Michael Cake Addiction. Hit the subscribe button while you're there if you'd like to see all of our great tutorials on cupcakes, cake pops, and cake decorating hints and tips. All right, so I've got my zebra looking like this. You can see there his little, his little row of mane. Now from here, turn him towards you and just have a look. I would like him to be just a tiny, tiny bit thicker on either side at the top here. So if you do look at it and you think, oh, I'd like a little bit more hair <laughs> on my zebra, then just pop down a little strip of your white chocolate and add a few more where you think it needs it. So my mane is looking thick and lustrous and I think he's going to be the envy of all the other zebras. Now from here, our coating is going to be nice and dry, so we're going to take that paint that we've pre-prepared, our paint or the candy melts, depending on what you've decided to use here, and I'm going to start by painting his nose. So I'm just going to paint around. You'll be able to tell if you've got too much alcohol if your paint starts separating. So. If you look at it, you can see just there how it's coming, sort of looking like it's getting a little bit see-through in some spots. 
Mine's going to be okay and you might just need to do a couple of coats but you really want it to look like this side where it's nice and shiny and dark. Obviously if you're using candy melts you can just dip it or you can use a paintbrush to apply. So any spots where it's looking a little bit sparse I'm just going to give it another coat. Make sure that it's not looking like it's watery anywhere. Alright, here's your zebra with his nose all painted and his beautiful mane. It's time to apply some stripes. So with the zebra, no two are the same, but they all do tend to run in the same direction. So I like to start at the bottom. That way if you do make a little mistake or you're not terribly happy with how it's going, it's, it's kind of hidden down the bottom. And I just dip it in that paint and kind of make some a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter, right down underneath that chin. Alright, so that's the bulk of our zebra stripes done. Make sure you're taking them all the way around underneath his chin and just have a look at him and think, alright, do I want a couple more? I'd like a couple more on my cheeks, on well, my zebra's cheeks. So I'm just going to run a couple down the sides there. And this is a stylized zebra, so it's however you want him to look. I'm pretty happy with that striping detail and that mane. So for final touches, we're just going to add on his nostrils and also his eyes. So for the nostrils, I'm just going to use just a tiny little dab of white chocolate. Try and hold this quite steady. And then for his eyes, I actually would have preferred to have used that lollipop stick, but I used it in the white chocolate. So I'm going to use the end of my paintbrush so that I get a nice big eye. And make sure that you turn him to face you when you put the eyes on, as I should have done with my ears, because they're a little bit wonky. One. And two. By turning him to face you, you make sure that you've got them perfectly even at the front there. So there you have your gorgeous stylized zebra ready for your next safari or jungle themed occasion and sure to please the animal lover in your family. As always, thank you very much for watching.